All good? Yeah. Yep, thank you. Rolling, thanks, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name's Stephen Howard. I'm the officer in charge of uh, Firearms Branch. Uh, the reason we called a press conference today was just to clarify a few points, as if there's been quite a few comments in the media over the last couple of days. So, Firearms Branch are processing applications relating to dual blaster licences as a priority. With TAFE, we are developing a gel blaster, or gel ball, paintball specific course, which will be shorter and cheaper than the normal course. We're also working to inspect premises of those venues that um, wish to get themselves licensed and become approved venues for gel blaster activities. There's been some comment, commentary that um, this has taken the industry by surprise. The importation of gel blasters was suspended by Firearms Branch in February. And I've met with a number of uh, retailers, both here in police headquarters and also at their shops. I've met with the Shooters Union, the Australian Jaw Blasters Association, the South Australian Jaw Blaster Association. I've had um, dealings with the Commissioner for Small Business in relation to complaints about the suspension of um, importation. So for people to say it's come as a surprise is a surprise. As you can see, more than we've had since Thursday, we've had more than 100 gel blasters um, suspend, uh, surrendered, and I thank those who have surrendered them so far, but if my import records are correct, there's 62,000 imported into, a, into South Australia, and there's still quite a few to be um, handed in. So the people have got two choices. They either surrender their gel blasters under amnesty, or they get licensed. They've got until the 7th of April, to use the amnesty that relates specifically to gel blasters. And I just want to remind everyone that there is no compensation for the surrender of gel blasters. As with any firearm, surrendered under the ongoing amnesty that's detailed in the Firearms Act. There's been some concern that um, people getting gel blaster licences or firearm licences will lead to an increase in firearms uh, in the South Australian community. That's not correct. When you apply for a firearms licence relating specifically to gel blasters, you can only own and possess a gel blaster. We scrutinise each licence application carefully, and if someone were to vary that licence to get another sort of firearm, they would have to demonstrate a genuine need for that firearm, and we would also scrutinise that carefully. We take our responsibility in relation to the regulation of firearms very seriously. If a person deals uh, in, in the gel blasters outside of the amnesty conditions or uses their gel blaster outside of the amnesty conditions, they're committing offences. And for a dealer, you're looking at um, $30,000 fine or up to seven years of imprisonment. For an individual, that's $10,000 fine or four years of imprisonment. Now, as I've said previously, gel blasters are defined as firearms within the Firearms Act because they compress air to fire a projectile and they can cause injuries. But also concerning is that they look like firearms. This is a gel blaster. This is a SOPOL issue firearm. Now you tell me, what's the difference? There are a number of firearms on this table and there are a number of gel blasters. Tell me which are which because this is the concern for operational police is that they confront people with gel blasters that look like a firearm that fires lethal bullets, not a non-lethal firearm that fires gel blaster balls, or could be the paintballs. Any questions? It says something here at this time you won't be compensating people, but is that something you're looking at in the future? Yeah. You talked about 62,000 um, gel blasters. Are they gel blasters that have been that have come into the state over a period of time, over 12 months or? Um, over two years. Oh, so 62,000 have come into the state. So to import gel blasters from overseas, you must get um, the Australian Border Force categorise them as a prohibited import and you must get jurisdictional uh, permission to import them into the state. So they class them as an imitation firearm Prior to the declaration being made and us then suspending uh, importation, um, they were allowed to be imported. So would you have records of those people who brought those in? 
uh, we have the records of the retailers who, or importers who bought them in, but not who they've sold them to. You say that um, only 100 have been handed in, is that statewide? Yeah. How many people have applied to get a firearms licence in relation to a gel blaster, or can you not qualify? Um, I think we've had 11 apply for firearms licences at this stage. Uh, we've had one person apply to operate a venue, um, and we, we're still, there's a, there is a process to apply for a licence, so you must pay the fee, fill out the form. Um, while it's not particularly hard, uh, we then go through them uh, systematically and, and start processing them. Right, so there's tens of thousands that are sitting at home with their job last birth. Well, quite possibly, but they're not, um, I would say they'd have a lifespan of between 12 and 18 months. Um, so there was, there's been nothing stopping someone throwing them out if they broke previously. We, we want them handed in under the amnesty so we can dispose of them properly. So with the TAFE course, does that, will that accompany the uh, licence? Would you have to take the TAFE course to get the licence? How does that work? Is that compulsory? Yeah, so with any firearms licence, you must do a, a safety course and TAFE provide that safety course at the moment. So we go through probity, you apply for your licence, we then see if you're a fit and proper person to uh, hold a firearms licence. If you meet that criteria, we then send you a letter saying, okay, you can now go do a firearms safety course, which is currently run by TAFE. And how much will that cost the person who wants to? Uh, well, TAFE haven't uh, landed on a, um, on a price yet, but they're looking at, so a normal safety course is two days, a gel blaster paintball safety course would be a day. So why didn't you consider this when you first announced that you were going to be banning gel blasters or that you, you'd need a licence to use a gel blaster? Why didn't you announce that last week when you made this announcement? Because we've, got, we've been working with TAFE over the last week on this. Sure. Um, you said earlier that, um, that it shouldn't have been a surprise to the industry that... Um, you know, you, you banned it. Some people have said that they had 12 hours, they had 12 hours notice. Um, is discussion something separate to an actual decision where they had so many hours to prepare for? Once we've made the decision that they're firearms, we can't have them then selling, fire, no, them knowing that they're firearms and selling them to the unsuspecting public who will then be told, okay, you've now bought a gel blaster 24 hours ago, but you've now got a licence, but they didn't know at that time. We, it's the decision we, we made, this is the course we're going to take, and... Um, so for some business owners, 12 hours, that's, that, that is a shock to them? Yeah, it, it would, well, it would be a surprise, but I have said quite often to the retailers that I've dealt with, and also on media, back in April when we um, launched the self-audit, these are firearms and they should be regulated. Did you consider a situation where um, these businesses could still operate um, their, their business, but the people coming in could only, only use a gel blaster at that business and not have it at home? We're, um, yes, and that's really what the paintball model is, is that you can only use a gel blaster in a um, authorised venue. So, it's, um, yeah, it's, we've based it on, on paintball and really if we were to give gel, bla gel blasters, I don't think it's right to give gel blasters an unfair advantage over paintball because then we're going to have the paintball industry saying, well, how come they're allowed to do this when we're not allowed to? Why are they then? Why don't you have to have a licence for a paintball? You do, yeah, yeah you do. Um, what's the clarification around the type of sort of gel blaster licence that they'll be given? Is it different to a category A? Okay, so there's, with a firearms licence, there's category A. Within the category, there are subcategories, uh, one, two, three, and four. So there's a category for target shooting, uh, hunting, um, and then we've got paintball gel blaster as category four. So they, they, you can apply for a category A licence with the subcategory of four only, and that means you can only use gel blasters. Right, so, so if someone who has a category A, would they need the four? They, they may do, they might only have it for hunting and target shooting, so then they would have to apply for a variation to their licence. So and we would, we would look at, their, at that application and scrutinise, why do you want this? And they'd have to justify it to us why. As with any licence variation. The Small Business Commissioner was calling on um, the government and uh, Save Home last week to start discussions about how you can reimburse these businesses who had to shut down overnight. Is that something that you've considered? Oh, that's not that's not for me to comment on. 
But then if um, businesses um, um, are um, required to have licenses, so if you've got a business, a um, gel blaster business, yeah. and as an individual I can go there and operate a gel blaster, why then do I have to have a license? If, if I can only operate it at that business, shouldn't it just be the business that requires a license, not the individual? That, no, that's that's right. So many um, many paintball venues operate in that manner, where they have a responsible person on the venue, and they'll say, okay, um, you want to come here and do paintball skirmish or gel ball skirmish. Um, I'm the responsible person. I can al I can allow you to shoot under supervision without a license. Without a license, yeah. So, if, but they can't bring their own gel blaster without a license. But they can use theirs under supervision, and supervision is supervision, not just saying I just run over there. Can you guarantee that everyone's going to have a license within that six months? Because some people are playing, saying that it takes up to eight months to get a license, so you'd already be breaking the law for two months by having one. We will be working hard to meet their needs to get a license. And in terms of the legal definition of firearm, you're certain that they can meet it. Yes. There's been some pushback. Yeah, that we've we've had it. Um, We've had, the de we've had them looked at by ballisticians and we've had, we've had other expert advice verifying their advice. So we're, yeah, we, we're confident. What happens to those outstanding 62,000 gel blasters that are out in the community if well, they're not handed in? Yeah, we, we don't know if they've on sold them to other jurisdictions. Um, so all I can do is ask for the community to surrender their gel blasters if they're not going to get licensed. 100 isn't a lot out of 62,000. It's only the start. Okay, thanks ladies and gentlemen. Do you want some uh, vision?